Hello and welcome to this fourth lunch break webinar. Today we're going to show you how to integrate firewalls with a Xicato um, lighting system. Uh, welcome, my name is Bas Hoxberge. I'm the architectural market manager at Farrells, and I'll be your host today. I'll mainly be operating in the background and well, support where required. Today's webinar will be presented by Ryan Sainsbury, technical project specialist at Farrells. The aim is to have a 15 minute presentation and then a uh, Q&A session afterwards. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll find uh, this Q&A button. Uh, just type your question there um, and we'll reply either verbally or via a typed reply. If you have any questions about the Zoom software, next webinars just want to say hi, you can also reach out to me via the chat window. So please use the Q&A button for any on-topic questions and the chat for anything other. Um, I also have a quick poll. Let me start with that because uh, I'm curious to understand, well, if you can hear everything, okay. Um, and if you um, have ever used uh, the Xicato system. So um, there should be a poll. If you're logged in via a web browser, you will not see it. Um, but if you can let us know if you are familiar with Xicato, that will help us. And uh, looking to the audience today, there's quite a mixed audience of people. Um, so I guess uh, let me see this time if I can share the results. I have tried this before and so far. Yeah, again, um, my Zoom window is great in hiding the window that I want to share with you. And that seems to have happened this time. So yes, share results finally worked. Um, so everybody can hear as well. Um, there's um, some people not familiar with Cicato, some who are. Um, thank all for your answer. With this done, let me hand over to Ryan and let's get started. Thank you very much, Baz. Okay, I'm just going to quickly take control. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. My name is Ryan Sainsbury. I work for Faros Architectural Controls. I am a technical project specialist. Um, welcome back for people who are joining us again. If you didn't manage to catch any of our previous webinars, they are available on our website at farriscontrols.com. Please do have a look at those if you get more time. So today's webinar is all about integrating Zakato with a Faros system. I've broken this down into three sections. The first section is going to be looking at the Zakato basics. So what exactly is a Zakato system? The typical project where you might find Faros and Zakato working together. And then they're going to look at how you would then integrate Faros with the Cicato system, what type of system setup you might need, the uh, types of hardware that you might need as well. And then finally, we're going to look at everything that the Cicato IO module does within Designer, and then we'll finish off with a little bit of cloud integration as well. So I'm just going to jump straight in and explain the basic concepts behind the Cicato system. So if you need inf more information about the Cicato system, please do check out uh, Cicato's website because obviously we don't manufacture this uh, system. It is a third party system. But just to give you a quick overview, the Cicato system differs from other lighting control protocols in that it uses a Bluetooth mesh network topology. So this is quite different from your standard system where let's say if you were to take a standard DMX5112 system, you'd have your controller, your controller would output DMX, it would hit your first fixture and then obviously travel through down the line to all the preceding fixtures. One of the issues that potentially can arise with this type of system setup is that if your fi first fixture for whatever reason was to go bad and data couldn't pass through it, obviously the rest of the line would then be affected. With a mesh network topology, it doesn't quite work like this. <laughs> Each fixture within the Zakato system can transmit and receive uh, via Bluetooth. So if you do have one fixture that goes down, obviously all the other fixtures in and around it can still transmit and receive, and you only have that one fixture with the issue. It doesn't affect the wider system. So there's no single point of complete failure. Obviously, you have no data cables running between fixtures as well, so it can be quite a cost-effective uh, cost effective solution. And also, it can be quite easy to install because you don't have to run all the extra uh, wiring. Because of the mesh network topology as well, it can be easily scaled up to <clears throat> a large amount of fixtures. And finally, the Cicato system has been developed to integrate with third-party systems such as Faros or building management systems. 
So I just want to have a quick look at a typical project that would be used with the Sakato system. This is one that we did, I want to say, probably about two years, 18 months ago now. It was a conference slash event venue that was on top of the Science Museum right in the heart of London. So Pharos was actually doing multiple things on this project. We were integrating with various show control devices, DMX devices, and also the Sakato system. And I think that's quite important to state from the uh, right from the start. Pharos obviously can handle multiple protocols at the same time. So it's not just a case that we have to be integrated with the Zucato system. You can use the Zucato system along other uh, protocols and, and, and uh, lighting systems and show control systems. So in this project specifically, Pharos was controlling some DMX based lighting that was doing some nice dynamic color changing. Uh, obviously, it was taking care of all of the scheduling and the show control elements, as I've just uh, mentioned. But the Sakato system was providing just the uh, white down, down lights using their uh, Bluetooth mesh topology. So <clears throat> in terms of integrating Pharos uh, with the Sakato system, there's a couple of things that we'll probably need to run through first. Pharos does not speak uh, Bluetooth. It does not have any Bluetooth capabilities. So you are going to need what's called an XIG, a Sakato Intelligent Gateway. Effectively, what happens is this Zucato gateway sits on the same network, the same Cat6 Ethernet-based computer network that the Faros controller will be on. And then we will simply make HTTP requests to the gateway. And the gateway will, gateway will then transmit those commands over the Bluetooth network. So um, it's really important just to remember that you, you need that gateway in order to speak to the fixtures and the communication between uh, Faros and the gateway is done by HTTP. The configuration of the Sakato sister system, uh, specifically the grouping of fixtures, needs to be done in the Sakato software. There will be an amount of commissioning that you will need to do in the Sakato software in order to get everything configured correctly. Once that's done, you can then go ahead and start programming with Faros. And of course, I'll show you that a little bit later on in the session. So I just want to have a look at a typical setup that you might find with a um, Zucato and Faros system. So on the left hand side here, I've got the Faros controllers and on the right, I've got the Zucato side. So again, you'll need a Faros controller. You always need a Faros controller whenever you're, you're using Faros. But you'll also need to then network that via something as simple as a, a networking switch with the Zucato gateway. We'll obviously then make HTTP requests to the gateway. The gateway then will then go off and speak uh, to the uh, Zucato fixtures. Also, as I said before, you can use multiple protocols. You can still use DMX, MIDI, RS232, 485 coming from the Faros controller. There's nothing to stop you from using this alongside another system. And also the Zucato system via our IO module framework will now be able to publish uh, data to our cloud system. So we'll be able to get back fixture information such as intensities or temperatures, and we can then publish that to our online cloud service. And I'll show you how to do that in a little while. So what are the advantages of using a Zucato system? And what are the limitations? First of all, other than the Zucato gateway, you don't need any other accessory devices from Faros, just the control of the gateway and the fixtures. I've set this up today. It's very easy to set up. You only need to run power to the fixtures, have your Zucato gateway networked, and you're good to go. This does not affect any of the channel counts that you would normally have within Faros. So obviously we sell our controllers with certain channel counts and LPC2 has 1,024 channels, but they are DMX only. The Zucato system will not uh, be, uh, you know, will not affect that channel count in any way, shape or form. We're just simply making HTTP requests to the gateway. The Zucato system is then doing everything else. One thing that I would mention, though, this is really important, is that because we're using HTTP to speak to the Zucato gateway, it's probably not a good idea to stream data to it. So if you've got, uh, let's say, a couple of buttons on your uh, touch panel interface that recall scenes, that's absolutely fine. You send the command, the scene starts. What tends to be an issue is when you start to use things like sliders and color pickers within Faros. If you imagine that you have a slider that can go from 0 to 255, and you have all of those ranges in between, as you step up from 0 to 255 with each new value, it will fire a trigger and then produce a HTTP request. So you could go from 0 to max, from 0 to 255, over, say, a second, half a second. And of course, that will then produce 
255 HTTP requests, uh, which the Zucato gateway is just not designed for. So using color pickers, using sliders, trying to create dynamic lighting, it's probably not the best thing to do with the Zucato gateway. Uh, it's probably a lot better idea uh, if you just have predefined presets or intensity levels that you can just click at and then have those uh, levels recalled. And again, I'll, I'll show you some programming practices that you should follow a little bit later on. Okay, so I'm going to switch now to Designer, and I just first want to have a look at the Zucato uh, Gateway IO module properties. So again, this information will need to be set up in Zucato software first, but once that's all been done, you can then just port that over to the IO module properties, which you can see in front of you. So first of all, uh, make sure you pull the Zucato IO module into your project file. Uh, if it's not there already, just hit download. <clears throat> Underneath the device integ integration, right at the bottom, you'll see the Zucato IO module. The current version is 2.2.3. Click that, just hit download. That'll pull that then into your designer, um, uh, designer software. And then simply just click on it, hit new, and you'll be uh, faced with the uh, following uh, configuration options in front of you. So you need a gateway address. As I said, it's all done via HTTP. It needs to be networked, so you need to know the IP address. You also then need to specify a port. I believe the default port is 8,000. Um, you can obviously go into the Zucato software and find this out though. And then you'll need to set up a network name, a username and a password. Um, and obviously the, uh, the username and the password gives you authentication. The network name, I think that's where you can have uh, multiple uh, Zucato systems, multiple areas, so to speak, like a facade, maybe, uh, I don't know, um, an entrance and you can obviously have them on different network names. Finally, at the bottom here, we have a poll interval, uh, and we also have a feature for extended logging. So the one way that you can set up the Zucato IO module is to continually poll the uh, Zucato system for new information, okay? So it will continually send out HTTP requests. The Zucato system will then return information to Faros, and then that can obviously then used uh, be used within your programming to uh, run certain routines or even just be published uh, to cloud just so that you have a, uh, a way of viewing that information. For today, I've got that disabled just because I want to manually do it. I'm going to manually make that request. It's easier to present that way, but just be aware that you can have the Faro system continually poll the Zucato system for new information. And you just enable the start poll at startup and then give it a poll interval. The maximum, or sorry, the minimum poll interval that you can set is every 10 seconds. The option underneath that extended logging just returns more information to the controls log just whilst you're programming, you can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to move ahead now and I'm going to start looking at some of the triggers uh, that I've got set up. So at startup, I've got a very simple request to get devices. This just returns all of the devices within the system. Um, if your controller is linked to a cloud account, this will then just get published to your cloud account straight away. It's just a useful thing to have at startup. And then next, I've got a very simple set of triggers that will turn all of my fixtures off, uh, all of my Sakato fixtures off, uh, all of my Sakato fixtures to 50%, and then finally, all of my uh, fixtures to 100%. The way that I've got this set up is that I've grouped all of the Sakato fixtures in my system set up today here to group number one. So if we look at the trigger, uh, sorry, the action options down at the bottom here, you can see that I've targeted a group. I've got a group number. Group number one is set up as all fixtures. I then got an intensity. And then finally, I've got a fade time. Uh, so if I just switch over to my second camera now, just so you're aware, I've got a TPC interface uh, in my hand. And I'm just going to very simply click a button. And you can see that those fixtures are now starting uh, to fade up. So just so people are aware, as I said, just, just doing this from a touchscreen interface. This is just networked up via a very basic networking switch to the gateway. The fixtures have power running to them, but there is no physical link between them. It's just using that Bluetooth mesh network that I talked about earlier on just to uh, get some playback. If we go down, you'll notice that I have some further triggers set up. So 
Instead of recalling intensity levels on scenes, you can also recall intensity levels on independent fixtures. Uh, so the fixtures that I have set up today are fixture numbers 13 and 14. It's just because we were uh, using them in uh, a different scenario a couple of months ago. That's just how they've been addressed. But as you can see here, I've got uh, two touch button events linked to uh, the uh, values in front of you. So if we look at the first trigger touch button event just simply sets the intensity of device number 13 to uh, zero percent and that does that in a zero percent fade time so it just snaps off so i'm just going to go ahead now and give that a quick go again i'm just using my tpc interface just press the button and there you go it can dims off and you can see that it's, it's fairly responsive as well so one thing that I do want to show you, which I think is a pretty cool feature, is that from Designer, you can actually set scenes on the fixtures, which you can then later recall. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the fixtures off. They've just faded off in the background. And now I'm going to just run you through uh, the programming that I've got in front of us. So the first thing that uh, you'll need to do is use the set scene action. Uh, I've got two actions set up here, one for device 13, one for device 14, so for the individual devices that I've uh, got set up today. And then I'm just going to pick scene number, so scene number one, and then I'm gonna set that to an intensity value of 2% with a fade time of one second. So what this does is this basically tells fixtures 13 and 14, okay, when scene number one is recalled, you need to go to 2%. That information is then stored within the fixtures. And of course, from a click of a button, I can then later on recall that. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give that a go now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to set scene number one. I've now set that to 2%. That's now been stored in the fixtures. And now when I recall it, you can see that it goes to this dim level. So again, just to summarize on that, I'm just simply, using the action to set scene one on device 13 and 14 to two percent you can get a little bit more advanced with your programming here if you're a bit more of an advanced programmer what you potentially could do is you could have a tpc screen a touch uh, screen interface with say nine buttons that could be your scenes click one of those and then you could be brought to a second page where you can make a selection of fixtures so fixture one 7, 14, 22. You can then set a level to them, and then you could have a button that then sends all that information to the Zakato system so that later in the day when you come back to uh, your, your Zakato system, instead of having to set all these fixtures individually again, you can just go, okay, now I want to recall uh, scene number one. So it, it's possible to do more advanced uh, programming uh, with this Zakato system of Faros. You'd probably need to use a couple of lines of script there, but nothing too taxing. Um, and it does obviously give you that um, flexibility uh, and, and robustness with the programming. So the last thing that I want to move on to today is how the queries work. So I, I think I've talked about this a little bit in the uh, earlier section of the webinar. It is possible for you to return information from the fixtures and also the gateway. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to get the statistics uh, for the whole system, I can have a button uh, on my TPC that simply makes a request to the uh, Zakato system, and then you'll get back a load of information, which will include uh, fixture intensity, uh, current uptime, the gateway, um, uh, the gateway status, um, and also stuff like device temperature as well, which I'm going to show you in a little bar. So it is possible for you to then make queries to the system and get information back. In terms of actually how you deal with that information, once it's returned to Faros, you then have a further set of triggers, which I'll show you now. So just to kind of talk you through the programming that I've got here, I've got another button that gets the device temperature again from the two fixtures that I have. So that's uh, device number 13, device number 14. Once the temperature of a device is then returned, it will then fire this trigger. This trigger then will simply check that the temperature is within a certain range. If it's in the higher range between 80 degrees and 
Uh, I've just set an upper limit as a thousand degrees, but it can be whatever you want. Uh, it'll then run the following routines. So it will send me an email, and then obviously it will change something on the interface just to let me know uh, that the fixtures got a little bit too hot. So very, very simple programming here. No scripted needed. All you need to do is just make a request for the device temperature. When the device temperature is returned, it will fire this trigger. I'll have a very simple condition that says, okay, if it's too hot, if it's gone between 80 and 1,000 know, degrees, then uh, it will send you an email and it will obviously uh, change certain things with, with uh, on the interface. Finally, the last action that I've actually got is then to pull that fixture down. Again, this is all completely optional. It's just designed to give you an idea of how you potentially could use these queries from the system to get this data back and then do something useful with it. Also, I have another condition as well, uh, which if the uh, temperature is returned uh, and it's in a you know, in a normal state, and it's just going to simply tell me on the interface that everything's okay. So this information that we can query from fixtures doesn't necessarily have to be used within your programming. You can just publish this to a cloud service as well. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about what cloud is, um, but essentially it's an online service that allows us to uh, display data um, from the control controllers. So this could be accessed anywhere in the world. Baz could be accessing this uh, in Holland right now, or I could be accessing this in New Zealand. And as soon as I make a request for that data from the devices, the IO module status variables, as we like to call them, which is the data that you see in front of you, will simply just get published to the cloud service. So at the moment, we can see that the device intensities, I've just turned them off, uh, is currently at zero. If I then pull them on to 100%, if I now uh, wait for them just to fade up a little while, so there you go. You can see that they're now full intensity. If I now go to get the status, give it a little while, and there you go. You can see at the top here now uh, that these have now uh, turned to 100%. Likewise, just to show you that again, if I now turn them off, the fixtures obviously dim all the way down. I can then go to my TPC interface just to get stats. Give it a little while to update, and there you go. You can see that they've changed to zero uh, percent. We also have various bits of information as well underneath that. So we have obviously the device names, uh, we have the gateway name, uh, the different types of groups that they appear in, gateway IP address. Uh, if we go down a little bit further, uh, we actually have. Uh, the ability to query the amount of sensors and switches in the system. I don't have any connected up today, uh, but you can also return various information uh, from the Zagato system. They have some accessory devices such as sensors, which can detect things such as temperature and lux levels. And again, I'll quickly pop back into designer just to show you, uh, show you those. So final things, um, as I said, uh, if we just look at the other triggers that uh, are provided within designer, um, we now have the option to integrate with the uh, temperature sensors and the uh, LUX sensors that come with the Scato system. And again, that can be used with an IO module. I don't have those today, but they are available. And finally, just one last thing, just as a final reminder, uh, obviously I was manually querying the information um, from the devices. Uh, if you want to though, you can just set up a poll interval, something like 10 seconds, uh, select start poll at startup, and that'll just continually get that information from the sub uh, system, and then obviously fire any necessary triggers or indeed update any of the cloud information that you can see as well. So yeah, that's it for today's webinar. Um, thank you very much. Um, it's been really good to kind of show you this system. Uh, I believe now we're going to move on to the question section. Uh, so if you do have any questions about the system, um, please do ask them. Uh, alternatively, if you want to, you can always contact us at support of Ferris Controls. And I think uh, with that being said, I'll probably hand back to Baz. Unmuting. Um, let me wait before I take over the video to see if there might be a question because I see um, uh, we had Jacob typing in hi, but not yet the rest of the question. So I expect there will be a question coming over there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I just maybe like to add or to clarify to, to be sure that's understood by people. Um, you mentioned correctly that we cannot send a full range of commands, you know, um, like for example, a slider towards mm -hmm. the Xicato system. But 
of course, um, fading of the Cicato system is possible because we're just, as you showed in the triggers, we are sending a command, including a fade time to that system. Yeah, I mean, just so I can show that again. Uh, yeah, you know, you're completely right, Baz. Uh, as I said earlier, um, you can send a fade time when you set an intensity. Uh, so I've got a fade time of five seconds down here. Um, so it is possible always if you wanted to ramp from one level to another that you can just use a fade time. Um, yeah, um, it would be totally possible to do that. I just think the important thing to remember here is just that, you know, streaming data to Zakato is uh, or to the Zakato gateway is probably not the best idea because it uses HTTP, um, which just in case in case I didn't make it clear has quite a lot of overheads. It's not really designed as a, a streaming protocol uh, as such. Um, so you just need to limit the amount of commands that are being sent out. So stuff like sliders, color pickers, things that can produce a lot of values very very quickly. Um, you know, you need just to be slightly aware of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm going to take a second question we received first. Um, when you go back to designer, can you show how a uh, trigger coming in from the Xicato switches, how you could use that to, for example, start a timeline or something else, um, some other fixtures, DMX fixtures that are connected to Faros? Uh, from the switches? Yeah. So if you select here, I guess you have them. Uh, um, I'm trying to think we have them at the moment. Because, um, of course, we sensors and switches can be part of the Xicato system. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, okay, yeah, you mean like relays. Okay, yeah. I understand. Yeah, fair enough. Um, it, I don't know if we currently support yeah. the Zicato relays. So, um, yeah, so let yeah, me, on, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I, I didn't notice as well. Um, I mean, how this typically works, so there are additional power meters in Xicato that we, at this moment, do not under, uh, do not support yet, but if there is a requirement to say, hey, I have a Xicato system and I'd like to augment that with DMX fixtures using firewalls, can you do that? Yes, we can add that com command to this I/O module to make that happen. And I think that probably answers it. So at this very moment, um, it seems we cannot, but we should be able to relatively quickly um, add that feature. So based on any switches in the Xicato system, you will be able to recall scenes or timelines in Faros. Yeah, I mean, we're continually updating our IO modules. Um, so, you know, soon we'll obviously make a note of this. Uh, and then, yeah, within hopefully future versions, it will just be another trigger on, off, and it'll probably be a relay number as well. Then, yeah, you just um, will attach that to an action of some kind. Thank you for that. Um, there's one more question. Um, for possible other Bluetooth based uh, systems. And I guess the thing here, uh, Zigbee was here mentioned in example. And I think, let me answer that if you're okay with that, Brian. Um, yeah, the thing to understand here is that Faros is great in sending out triggers to other systems, but we don't have any Bluetooth or Zigbee on board. So as long as that other system has some sort of bridge, you are able to control that system. For example, um, well, you know, Philips U as an example, I mean, some Joomer great stuff, but um, they also have a gateway. And from Faros, we have another IO module that you're able to load that can send commands to their, well, gateway, which they happen to call a bridge. So as long as the system has an interface via ethernet, Faros will be able to control it. Um, and, I guess maybe, and if you go back, Brian, to your questions page, I mean, if we might be unclear, if you would like to talk further about this, please feel free to uh, contact us via support at Faros Controls. I mean, sometimes a one-on-one -on -one conversation about certain features might be um, easier. Um, I guess if there's no other questions, let me take over the screen. like this um yeah thank you all for your uh, well first of all ryan thank you for uh doing this presentation if people have any questions as mentioned um we can al also still always answer them via support at farscontrols.com um after this webinar you will receive a small survey um also where you can suggest possible other topics for webinars and your feedback on that is very much appreciated um if there are no further questions um and let me just double check if that was not 
uh, another question that came in. No, that seems to be all good. So with this, um, yeah, I'd like to th thank you all for your attendance. Uh, we'll be ending this webinar um, and I really hope to see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.